Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be installing Windows NT4 on a Raspberry Pi using the QMU emulation software. So the build I'm using is a Raspberry Pi 4 with an external SSD hooked up to it, and it also has four gigabytes of RAM. I'll put a link in the description to this computer on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to the setup of the hard drive because it's booting from the external SSD. So I have a standard Raspbian Buster interface here. So I've created a Windows NT4 ISO from my Windows NT CD, and then I've also downloaded the Service Pack 6. So I'll open up a terminal, and I'll go to my desktop, and I'll run MD5 sum on these two files, so you can see exactly what I'm working with. So I can't provide these files for you or the code, but um, like if you're looking for the Service Pack uh, SP6i386, this is the one I'm using. This one could be hacked too, I don't know. Um, I don't actually remember where I even downloaded this, but uh, if yours is the same as this, you'll know you're using the same version. The Windows NT4 ISO could be different for different people. So I'll clear my screen here. So the first thing you need to do is install QMU. So you want to type sudo space app space install space QEMU and hit enter. And it will say here I have the latest version already because I've already installed it, but you'll install it on yours. I'll clear my screen again. So the first thing I need to do is create the hard drive image. I want to type QMU dash IMG space create space dash F space QCOW2 space NT4 dot cow space 4G. So that will create a four gigabyte disk image. So if I type LS space dash LH, you can see here we have the image and it's very small right now. It's 193K. So I'll put a link in the description of my website too where I'll put these, some of these commands I'm using so you don't have to copy them off the screen here. So I'll clear my screen again. Now I want to run qmu-system-i386 space dash capital L space period space dash hda space and I want to specify the image I just created so it'll be nt4.cow space dot net space NIC comma model equals PC net space dash net space user space dash CPU space Pentium space dash sound HW space all space dash VGA space Cirrus space dash M space 1G so I have a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi. I'm going to designate one gigabyte of RAM for it. Space dash CD-ROM space, and then I'll do my WinNT4 ISO. So this is the ISO file I created. Then I'll do dash boot space D. I'll hit enter. And now this will bring up the virtual machine. So I can make this full screen by holding down Control alt and then hitting F. And this looks like a Windows NT screen you would have seen back in the day. I think I got my CD-ROM 20 plus years ago. I think it was 99 or something. So I'm going to be speeding up the video here uh, at different points in time. And I'll put a designation on the screen as to how fast I'm speeding it up. So here I'm at the install, I'll hit enter, I'll hit enter, I'll hit C, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom, and I'll hit F8 to agree, and I'll hit enter. And now it says it needs to partition my drive. So I'll select that, and I'll say I want to format as NTFS, and it's going to format the drive. Okay, it's gonna ask where to install Windows NT, so I'll just hit enter for the default. So now it says it's going to examine the hard drives. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit escape. And it says, please wait while setup examines your disks. This may take several minutes. And now it's copying the files. Okay, so it says this portion of setup has completed successfully. It says press enter to restart your computer. So I can pop out a full screen at any time. I can just hit Control alt f And then if your mouse is captured in here, you can do Control alt g to get your mouse out. So instead of restarting, I'm just going to close it and I'll reopen it back up. 
So the reason I have to close it is because you need to eject the media. So what I'll do is I'll run the command again and I'll remove this where it says boot D. But I'm going to leave the CD-ROM attached. So I'll hit enter and it will start back up. Okay, so that just converted the system to NTFS. Okay, so now we're at the Windows NT setup. I'll hit next. It says preparing for installation. I'll choose typical. I'll enter my name and organization. I'm going to enter in my CD key. I'll give this a name. I'll hit next. I'll give it a password. And this doesn't look for like a really good password. If you have 14 characters or less, it should work, which is kind of funny because uh, if you want a really good password, you'd want over 14 characters. I'm going to say I don't want to create an emergency repair disk. I'll hit next. I'll say install the most common components. I'll hit next again. I'll say this computer will participate on a network. I'll say uh, connect to wired network. I'll hit next. I'll hit start search. It found the adapter. I'll hit next again. I just want to use TCP IP, so I'll hit next. I'll hit next again. I'll hit continue. I'll hit yes that I want to use DHCP. I'll hit next again. I'll hit next here. I'll hit finish. I'll choose my time zone here. I'll hit close. It says the system found the following video adapter. I'll hit OK. I'll change this to 1024 by 768 and I'll change the colors to 16 million. I'm going to move away from full screen for this. Okay, so I think I already hit apply there. So I'll hit OK. I'll hit, uh, well, I'll tr test it. Okay, there we go. So I'll say I saw it properly and I'll hit OK. There we go. And I'll hit OK again. Okay, it says Windows NT4 was successfully installed. So I'll hit restart computer. I'll turn it off of full screen for a second. Looks like we got a crash and I'm not sure why. So I will hit control alt G to get out of here and I'll close this and I'll try and start it from the terminal again. Okay, it looks like it's up now. I'll turn off full screen and turn it back on so it centers things. Okay, and I'll hit control alt delete to log in. I'll type my password. So the resolution I'm using on here is 1024 by 768, so it's stretching the screen just slightly. Let's see if we can compare it to, oh, this is kind of weird right now. It's uh, in the middle of the screen. I'll get back to full screen. Okay, so we have welcome to Windows NT here. So this is the base Windows NT install. If we right click on my computer, we can look at properties. And it says we have an x86 family five model four stepping three computer. We have uh, a million kilobytes of RAM. We open up the computer. We can see the C drive. I'll right click on that and hit properties. And it says four gigabytes. And as you can see, this is pretty fast uh, opening things. Of course, I don't have anything installed on it, but this is a very old system. This didn't come with much. Here's paint. So this system should work fairly well for, um, you know, running very old uh, Windows NT applications. I mean, it's not going to be the fastest way, but it, it's, I'm surprised it even works. If I want to shut down, I can just go to start, shut down, 
and shut down computer. And now it says safe to turn off your computer. So I want to exit full screen here and then I need to uh, get my mouse. I'll hit control alt G and then close this window. So it doesn't shut down the system when you hit um, shut down. It brings you up to that restart screen then you have to actually close it. So I also have this service pack three. So, so there are a number of different ways to transfer this to the Windows NT system. So I'm just going to use a web browser to do it. So what I'll do is I'll type sudo space app space install space nginx. And this is probably overkill. There's probably easier ways. Um, you can set it up so you can have a shared folder between the systems, I think, but I haven't really got that working. I also want to mention that if you have set this up and if you have any tips of your own, please drop them in the comments. I'd be interested to see what people are doing because this may not be the best way. This is the way I got working and I wanted to share. So now I'll clear my screen. I want to type sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash sites available. And then I want to go to default and I'll scroll down until I get to the server section. And here I want to type auto index space on and then semicolon. I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. I'll type sudo space system CTL restart space nginx. And I have this uh, SP6 uh, service pack six file I downloaded. So I'll copy that and I'll copy it to, actually I'll do sudo space CP space and then the name of that file, and I'll copy it to forward slash bar, forward slash www, forward slash HTML. So now I'll restart my NT system. I'll just press the up arrow until my history gets to this point. I'll hit enter. Okay, so the system's up. I forgot to mention one thing. I need to know the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. So I'll open up a new terminal tab. I'll just type IP space A. And we see my IP address is 192.168.7.206. I'll get back to my Windows NT instance. I'll make that full screen. I'll log into it. And I haven't got sound working very well on this. I think it kind of works, but I'll select this so it doesn't show anymore. So I can open up Internet Explorer. And this is a very old version. I think it's version 1 maybe. Let's look. It's version 2. So you can't open up very many modern sites with this, but I can easily open up the one I just installed on the Raspberry Pi. So here we have Welcome to Nginx. Actually, I need to get out of here, go back to my web browser, and I'll go to that directory I put it in, and I'll remove the index page. So I'll type sudo space rm and then index. Okay, so now I'll get back to Windows NT. I'll refresh this if I can. There we go. So now this will just show all the files in that directory. So if there's anything you want to transfer, you can just put it in that web directory. And like I said, this is probably not even the best way to do it, but it was easy. Um, if I hit this now, it should download. I'll say save as. I'll just save it to my desktop. Okay, that's done copying. I thought that was odd that it took so long, but it's done. So I'll close that. Now I can open up the Surface Pack 6 installer. Okay, I'll choose Accept License Agreement and I'll uncheck backup files necessary to uninstall and I'll hit Install. And now it will install the Service Pack. Okay, so that's completed. I'll hit restart. Looks like this crashed again. I'll close it and start it back up. Okay, I'll type my password in. So in some ways this seems kind of slow, it takes a long time to boot, but otherwise it seems kind of fast because I remember using this back in the day and you had your really slow spinny hard drives 
and it would take forever to copy things. Um, this has a gig of RAM in it, four gigabyte hard drive, and it's pretty decent speed, really. It says at least one service or driver failed to failed during startup. Okay, I'll hit OK. If I right click on the computer now to properties, it says I'm using 4.13.81. Well, you saw on the blue screen, I uh, sped through it, but it said uh, SP6 on it, Service Pack 6. I guess I can open up some of these files here. So it's pretty responsive. So from here, you could install Microsoft Office on it. There are some web browsers you can maybe download on here. That's uh, It's tricky to get on the web with this on a lot of modern sites because these older systems don't support the modern browsers. I think there's a version of Firefox that will run on here. You can put Internet Explorer 6 on here, I think. So here we have a Windows NT 4.0 on a Raspberry Pi. So this is kind of impressive to me considering the Raspberry Pi is considered kind of a toy to some people and it can run this system that was a very industrial kind of operating system back in the day. It was super uh, robust, uh, stable, you name it. It's kind of funny that's crashing every once in a while here when I'm restarting. Um, I think that's just due to updating it, but uh, otherwise I expect it'll probably be pretty stable and running. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.